Hi everyone, welcome back to my Solo Sessions project. This week I'd like to play you a piece by the British composer Martin Butler. Martin wrote me a concerto 11 years ago and um, it is such a fabulous piece of music and we've just recorded it so I'm really looking forward to sharing that um, next year. This year he's written me this solo piece and um, it is a very exciting piece of music and quite challenging to play. <laughs> it certainly kept me busy in the last few weeks. Um, and both pieces, both the concerto and this solo piece, were commissioned by the Prestine Festival, to whom we are very grateful. So um, here's Martin to talk about his piece, Body Electric. Good morning, Martin. How are you? Hi, Amy. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> We're about to you at the moment. So I'm sitting in my living room in the Hove, um, and about two minutes from the seafront. Uh, it's a beautiful day here. And I might go for a little walk along the front later on when we're all way done. Oh, sounds lovely. I wish I could come with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for writing this amazing piece. It is uh, technically incredible and um, uh, very challenging to play, but um, I, I feel like we've kind of moved on from working together with the concerto and it's it's becoming a, you know, a really lovely, um, thing for us to be working together on different pieces of music. So thank you so much. <laughs> um, uh, and um, it, you wrote this solo piece during the coronavirus crisis, but um, you've told me uh, that you don't feel that it's necessary, necessarily reflective of the crisis. Would you mind telling us about how you view how, how this piece fits into um, everything at the moment. Yeah, well, well I, I suppose inevitably it is about. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can write, write music or create anything really without being aware of and dealing with um, what's going on around you, whether that's in terms of a health um, crisis or, or or a political situation or anything else. I think you know, music just, you have to respond somehow. But you don't have to do it consciously. So it doesn't have to be about, about the crisis. Um, but I think in terms of this, this, this particular piece, it's, it's, I often think of my music, well, I want my music to be, as Michael Tippett said, um, a comfort in some way. I don't mean like a, a, um, a comfort blanket or anything childish, but, but something that represents the possibility of better times and better conditions. Um, and to do that, it has to have a certain kind of energy. I don't mean energy in terms of speed and progression or anything like that, but a kind of quality that's al that's already alive and connects connects bits of the piece together in certain ways that moves it forward. Um, and to me, that's that's always what I'm looking for in my composing anyway, to kind of try and engage with that sort of energy. And I suppose inevitably this this particular piece, when when it was during during the um, pandemic, then uh, holds up a kind of for me personally anyway, a kind of the, the hope of, of uh, finding that uh, finding that energy. I mean, Walt Whitman, who wrote the poem from which the title comes, um, was all about that kind of transcendental idea that transcendental idea that. Um, collectively we're all in this together we're all in the pandemic together equally um but, they, uh, but we're also all, all in, in the human condition together and um can grasp the possibility of, of moving out of it surviving it recovering from it and building better better futures um and that kind of as as a collective of humankind um we're in a better position to do that transcendentally as a collective than in, as individuals I love that idea. That's very Walt Whitman, middle of the 19th century. I mean, he's using the word electric, which is practically was not coined at that time. It was the first time, almost the first time it was used in the literary sense. Um, but it's a very powerful word even now, where it's so all pervasive. And then electricity is a, a force, an energy that. Um, that holds us together. I mean, we have energy, electricity in us. You know, we're partly made of electricity and that's the way our neural networks work, you know. Um, 
And Whitman was the sort of person who believed that that, con and that connects us in a very fundamental way. Um, and that's the kind of energy I mean. I mean, the piece itself, um, as you'll know from having played it, uh, is about this really tight, crackling kind of almost playful um, energy that doesn't quite bust out of itself, doesn't kind of manifest itself in any kind of explosive way, um, but is nevertheless there all the time. Um, and it kind of pops certain little gestures. And um, I think play, playful is, is important to, certainly to me um, and to Whitman. Uh, he's just, just playing with these, the, these ideas of connectivity and bouncing, oh, bouncing them off each other. Mm -hmm. And I think this piece is only five minutes long, but it's but it tries to do that with a, with a, with a handful of small gestures and, and motoric discourses that come and go and meld into each other and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of where I'm coming from. And I, I don't think that is a kind of response to the pandemic in some way, it's my personal response anyway. Um, and the other thing I was thinking about, you mentioned the concerto um, that I wrote for you 11 years ago now the Prestine Festival. I can't believe it, but it is 11 years. Um, that, I, won't, I was very conscious of the way that piece is and the ways in which I wanted this new piece to be different from that. Um, and it is a very different kind of piece. It's different kind of harmony, different kind of gestural language. Um, but in some ways, it's a response to that too, because, um, because they're both written for you. Um, your playing was very much in my mind and your sound very much in my mind and the way you um, shape things. I think you wonderful phrasing, Amy, that's the brilliant, the brilliant stuff. And I was thinking about that a lot and yeah, just weighing things and placing them exactly right in, a, um, in terms of rhythm and in terms of the, the, the temporal architecture of it. Um, so that was the other thing that was feeding into this very strong you, you're playing. <laughs> Gosh, well, and yes, an enormous honour to have been part of this work because it is, it is absolutely stunning, and I, I, I love it. So thank you very much, and thank you so much for very kindly telling us about it. No, no, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, madam. I'll see you soon. Okay, Eddie. See you. Thank you. 